planted. God wants us to maximize those opportunities in whatever workplace he's given us. He maybe gives you a car. That might be your workplace. Some days I feel like that is my primary office. How many of you can relate with that? Raise your hand. Yeah. I carry a bag. I call it my little Red Riding Hood bag. It's got all my gear in it. I can go anywhere with that bag. And I just take my work with me wherever I go. But we all can be smarter and bolder about sharing our faith in wherever our workplace is, whether it's a cubicle, a, a sky rise, a small office building, or your neighborhood. Wherever God's take to, taken you, he wants to use you right there. And that's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about the five golden rules that you can implement into your life in order to share your faith more effectively. The reason I chose golden rules is of course because the golden rule is right from scripture. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And when you are talking about sharing your faith, <laughs> there is no greater overriding principle to keep in mind than treat people the way you would want to be treated. If you were outside that circle of faith, if you were outside that community that sometimes feels a little exclusive and sort of club-like and click-like, how would you want to be treated? That's the primary thing that should dictate everything you do, no matter where your workplace takes you. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. I cannot emphasize this enough. You never want it to be a surprise to someone that you're a Christian. Being a closet Christian and being humble about the fact that you're a Christian and no one in your workplace has any clue that you even go to church on Sunday, I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be glowing with joy about that. That is not something I would say to be proud of. Doesn't mean that you have to run around your office proselytizing every week or every day, but what it does mean is you can start early. You can start early by mentioning your faith in very casual, easy, conversational ways to just get it out there so that they aren't blindsided and they say, wow, I never even knew she was a Christian. I would never want that to be said about me. But you can do it in small doses. You can do it in really small, easy, effective ways. If someone wants you to go to lunch on a Monday and you're going to faith at work, you could say, I can't go to lunch because I'm going to this luncheon that I go to once a month called Faith at Work. You have said nothing else other than what you're doing, where you're going, but you've mentioned your faith in a very easy conversational way. You do not have to follow that up with anything except maybe I'd love to go to lunch with you next time. Nothing ever happens without relationship. I know that some people have been saved in giant corporate settings where there's an inhuman like, you know, sort of a general corporate saving going on, but the majority of people's lives and faith are changed through other people. Stepping into their lives, sharing their experience, and building a relationship. There's a scripture that talks about in Colossians about what, that we need to wear love. If we wear nothing else, we need to put on love. And the message translation says, it's your all-purpose garment. And if we aren't looking at friends and colleagues and people that are outside of the faith, that we sure wish were inside the faith that had the hope that we have that understood how amazing life can be, if we aren't looking at them with love, we are missing it all together. When I lived in Minnesota around 12 or 13 years ago, I realized that I was lost, but I didn't know it until Jesus found me. And in that time, I decided I'm done living halfway. I'm done believing all the lies about who I am, and I'm ready to fully be God's treasure. And so the heart I have for this particular message tonight and this topic is, is from deep within, and it's taken me years to truly believe what God thinks about me. And I think that as much as we talk about being Christians who are treasured and valued and loved by the Lord, we really struggle sometimes with embracing that and really wearing what God believes of us instead of what the world believes of us. So we fall under the heritage of the Israelites. We are the chosen. We are the holy, the precious treasure of God. Every one of you is. 
And maybe you know it in your mind, maybe you know it halfway in your heart, maybe you know it a little more in your heart than in your mind or when it comes out of your mouth. But God wants you to know it fully through every part of your being. What a treasure you are to him. While we were yet sinners, he came to save us. He didn't wait to have us figure it all out. It's like friends of mine say that they don't want to come to church because they don't fit in and they don't understand and they don't have all the answers. And I say, well, if you had cancer, you would go to the doctor. You wouldn't wait to get cured from your cancer before you went to get treatment. Is that correct? And everyone will agree with that. And the same goes for becoming a Christian, learning the faith, coming into God's family. If people don't know, how are they gonna learn? unless they come and start showing up and start hearing the truth about who we are, who we can be when we receive that amazing sacrificial gift. We are so loved. And of course you all know John 3.16, for God so loved the world that he, came, he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish. And that means God so loved you. Not the world, but you. Mm -hmm.